science teachers have read it. How do you respond to students who deny accepted science? I teach an intro astronomy course at my university, and I'm pretty sure there's at least one denier every year. I don't bother arguing, and that's all they're interested in, arguing. They don't actually want to learn. If they want to put down the wrong answer on their test, I'll just mark them incorrect and move on. If they continue to answer incorrectly, they'll fail the course. It's their money, and they're free to spend it on a course they'll purposely fail if that's what they really want to do. I teach secondary science, 11 18 year old. I don't argue, I simply ask them questions, or I put forward follow-ons from what they've said. For example for students who are against evolution I ask them about MRSA and how do they think it's happened. Telling someone they're wrong very rarely changes their views. Getting them to actively interrogate their own ideas is much more important. To be honest it's the same for everyone. One of my favorite questions to ask students is to prove to me the earth orbits the sun and not the other way around. Science has told them it's correct but few of them can give me coherent arguments as to how we know it's the case. Make them question things. Not science related, but I had a kid in my history class argue with the professor that slavery wasn't a factor in the civil war. Not that it was one of many factors. Didn't try to downplay it. He just said it had nothing to do with slavery and was all about the different cultures. When presented with the secession documents from several states claiming slavery as their main reason for seceding, he just said well of course they'd come up with a document like that after the fact. The winners always rewrite history. I'm eager to know that professor's response. High school biology teacher. I teach in a small rural district. The town is full of Baptist churches. For the most part I've learned that I just say we are learning the consensus of scientists. If you want to get the right answer, you will put down either the right answer, or you will preface any answer with scientists think, or scientists have concluded or evolutionary biologists have concluded, and then you proceed. I've had parents try to pull their kids out of my room, I've had parents accuse me of hating God, I've had parents accuse me of turning their kids into nihilists. I've had parents file formal complaints against me to my administration, and when that didn't work, to the school board. I've gotten the most insane emails from parents and my own co-worker who is a parent of one of my former students. For the most part except a few totally brainwashed kids, my students go along and learn what I'm teaching. It also always the freshmen who think they have to parrot what their crazy parents are saying that are the worst to deal with. By the time I get the juniors and seniors for my electives they've all toned it way down. I've had my class interrupted because I had a kid saying Jesus over and over again out loud to every question. Literally just Jesus, like that was supposed to dispel my entire chapter of information. Those kids won't take another class from me again. Even though there are only two science teacher, they specifically avoid me the rest of their career. I'm nothing but nice, kind, understanding. But the brainwashing is so complete, they think I'm some evil influence. I'm not exaggerating. I wish I was. I also teach an 8th grade class. Parents make specific requests that I not be the teacher of their children. Because I'm evil? I don't know. It exasperating. I'm just doing my job and teaching the next generation science standards and the standards of my state. But some years are worse than others. Sometimes I get a batch of brainwashed kids. Sometimes the brainwashed kids shut the frick up about it. Sometimes they are all reasonable. I've had my class interrupted because I had a kid saying Jesus over and over again out loud to every question. Honestly this sounds hilarious. I'm imagining this really sassy, lispy voice yelling Jesus are at the most strange moments. <laughs> I'm not a teacher, but I know someone who failed multiple assignments in biology because she didn't believe in evolution. They probably felt proud denying it too, which is a sad thing. As someone who was raised in the Bible Belt, when I was in public school it was usually the teachers that denied science like evolution. The issue is most people don't know what evolution is. The actual concept of evolution by Charles Darwin basically said traits fade away as animals with better traits live longer than those with less desirable traits. I teach at a Catholic high school in the deep south. I teach evolution and I am thorough. 
Sometimes I have students come to me because they do not believe in evolution and they are concerned. I very gently assure them that they are free to believe whatever they believe. I expect them to be able to explain what the consensus of scientists is and how science explains evolution. I take their personal beliefs out of the equation, entirely. If those students are Catholic, which there's a good chance they are, then they're confused about their own faith. Speaking as a Catholic myself, the church has endorsed evolution for quite some time. Physics astronomy maths with a smattering of KS3 general science here. I get moon landing deniers in classes all the time, usually as a joke, very rarely serious. I have taught biology and have had a couple of religious nutters object to evolution. I have yet to encounter flat earth yet, but it's not so common here in the UK. 9 stroke 10 times something like this comes up in my class it is not conspiracy, but naivety, from younger teenagers who uncritically believe things they see on YouTube. When the Russian sleep experiment creepypasta did the rounds a while ago I fielded questions about that, and I am regularly asked if the world will end tomorrow when that's the madness du jour. Most students do not believe it. They just are curious and want answers, and as their science teacher, they ask me. Once it's become clear that they actually believe something mental, I am not going to change their mind with evidence. Belief in conspiracy theories like science denial is not about evidence or facts. It's about a sense of powerlessness and distrust of authority, and I can't do anything about that. I'm not going to engage with crazies, just ignore them and teach kids who want to learn. I laugh in their face and take the pee. Then if they continue to disrupt the learning of others with stupid conspiracy ideas, I throw them out of my class. It is important for the majority of students to see such beliefs being treated as an abject joke, so they are not normalized. Basically, you get a minute or two for me to establish if you are earnestly naively asking a question about something you, usually, read online, or are actually a loon. If it's the former, I will help you and educate you. If the latter then no mercy, I am paid to educate, not to indulge paranoid insanity. I mean, culture is real, so I could totally see someone believing in the Russian sleep experiment, even if it flies off the handle towards the end quite a bit. Not a science teacher, but I once missed out on a one night stand because I couldn't give her a good enough answer to how can a monkey turn into a human. UK science teacher here, secondary, most of the ones who do this don't actually believe what they are saying and are just seeing if they can get a rise out of me or a laugh from their peers, I just try to ignore it and get on with the lesson at hand, what we have worse is that we are a rural school and lessons to do with nutrition or climate change, caused by farming, can get quite heated, for example, lesson about nutrition, me, there's a link between eating lots of red meat and poor health, student my dad's a beef farmer miss he's not trying to hurt anyone we have beef every day and we don't have any health problems are you saying we should be vegan vegans are idiots this is stupid that's fine believe whatever you want i'm still going to test you on all of it then i hope as we go through lessons something sticks it's actually beneficial to me as a teacher to have deniers in the class because it makes me work harder to demonstrate how these principles scientifically check out. I know it's a flashpoint around here, but how many of these students really exist? How many teachers have actually had a kid stand up and say evolution is false and refuse to learn it? Outspoken maybe one or two ever so often, quiet and disinterested probably more than we'd want to admit. I'm a geography major, there are usually one or two students each class that claim to be flat earth society, very rarely serious. The professors all love it as they take all the excuses and reasoning from both the serious and non-serious students and present the reasonings at the annual banquet the department holds. It always done so you don't know where the original comments come from but a professor makes a fake lecture out of it and it's always hilarious. Other than that, they just make them wrong in class and move on. After taking 45 minutes to explain 7.2 million years of human evolution to a student during my office hours, she asked so where's Adam and Eve I basically told her she could believe whatever she wanted but in order to pass the class, she had to put down what I told her. Obligatory not a teacher but in my class there was a super religious girl who refused to learn the Darwin theory because it's a myth. Guess who failed the exam? 
I was a student in university many years ago and had a course in evolutionary biology. It was a first year course with over 2000 students and every week, there would be an optional tutorial where students would write questions and leave them at the front of the auditorium so the professor could read it and answer to the group. For this unit, the professor was an English gentleman with a very long CV and a member of the Royal Society and in general was very passionate about biology and evolution, but in an English manner. In one of the first tutorials after the introductory lectures, there was a question asking about intelligent design and what would it take for him to accept it. He said something along the lines of this is a stupid question and I'm not wasting my time nor the other students time on debunked rubbish and then went on to the next question. This happened about 15 years ago so my memory on the event is a little fuzzy. I am really hoping this is first year course with over 200 hundreds not 2000. Even if you don't believe it, doesn't mean that you can't understand and use the science you are taught. That's what gets the grade. Belief is irrelevant. Think of it this way, learn what scientists do in the field in question. If you still don't believe it, you need to know about the science to have any effect pushing your belief. Is this really an issue in America? I went to a Catholic school in Orson never encountered anything like this, and we got all the science teachings. Catholicism as a religion organization accepts evolution and modern science. People who follow the religion may or may not be anti-science though. It's the other forms of Christianity, typically sex of Protestantism, that are far more anti-science, and Protestants are more common in America. Ultimately it's their grade but if time allows, I'm up for some good debating. Mine is backed up with scientific evidence, theirs is back up with something they found on Instagram or their parents told them. If they don't want to follow my curriculum and respond correctly on the test, it's their problem. There was always this pro-Christian person in my class who would sit angrily through every lesson and disagree when it came to group work or discussions. Their parents were a bit odd. I know this thread is going to be full of a bunch of stupid funny crap, but I just want to make a point saying it's perfectly okay to debate about things, even that which we accept as 100% true. It's how many new ideas are started, and new discoveries made, and that's for everything, not just science. And of course, those who disagree should be provided with proof when possible, not just told they're wrong. Being curious isn't stupid, being stupid is stupid. Today someone said something very insightful to me. Those Christian sects have been going on and on about sinful stuff and how you'll end up in heck or eternal fire or both. So he said but if you do what the devil wants, why would you not party with the devil? Because the devil isn't a ruling figure in heck, he is a prisoner as well. Amazingly enough, the cartoons you watched as a kid had it wrong. I'm late to the conversation, but it is important to teach the skeptical nature of science. Science can't be wrong. The reason is that science is about explaining natural phenomenon through the scientific method and following evidence. Through observation and experimentation, the evidence has led us to scientific conclusions. However, nothing should be considered absolute, rather that it has the most compelling evidence. So let them deny the accepted scientific conclusions. But, they should be challenged to use unbiased evidence to back their claim. They should understand that science is a process, not a set of facts. I would say you are correct the commonly accepted theories may be incorrect. I am glad you are able to think for yourself. However my hands are tied and we are required to teach and grade you on the commonly accepted theories. If you want to change the commonly accepted theories I hope you make a breakthrough one day. Until then however I will grade you on what is in the book. There is no reason to be rude or condescending to these people. After all some of the theories we currently accept are no doubt flawed in some way, or may even be disproven at a later date. I mean look at the discovery that the earth revolves around the sun. People thought Copernicus was insane for thinking such a thing. I am glad you are able to think for yourself. However my hands are tied and we are required to teach and grade you on the commonly accepted theories. What a creationist his is. I know this evolution stuff is bulls, but if I want to keep my job I have to teach it, especially with the my hands are tied part. I'll never forget my high school biology teacher pointing at the stapler on his desk and telling us, saying you believe in, or don't believe in evolution is like saying you believe in stapler. It's not there for you to believe in or not, it just is. Dude was the greatest. 
girl in my bio lab last semester argued to the teacher on multiple occasions that the male and female sex binary doesn't exist. She was intellectually curb stomped each and every time. That would have been more interesting if she had brought in evidence that it's possible to be genetically male and physically female. It has something to do with the way the body processed testosterone. I forget the name of the exact condition. You're fully allowed to believe anything that you want, just as I'm allowed to speak about what I believe. Thousands of scientists have found hard evidence of their existence of what I'm about to talk about. I'm not here to change what you believe, but you are here to absorb and understand what I'm going to tell you, whether or not you agree. Also the great thing about science is that if you disagree you can conduct your own experiments to test your hypothesis. Not a teacher, but I went to a Catholic high school. Basically, my religion teacher taught us one thing, and then our biology teacher taught us another. If we asked our biology teacher about the religious evidence, she'd basically call it bull. When I taught physics, I always started the first class of the semester explaining that physics in particular and science in general is not about finding truth. It is about mastering the web of cause and effect relationships that most accurately describe the universe as we see it. The goal is to find the most succinct cause and effect rule that covers the largest set of observations. Physics has two basic statements covering everything. For everything we observed before the advent of electronic instruments, classical physics, the rule is three forces accelerate three objects. For modern quantum physics the rule is sometimes, sometimes not. If a student wants the truth about evolution or global warning, I tell him he is in the wrong class. Not a teacher, but in 7th grade, my science teacher got to the chapter on evolution and went around the class asking how students thought humans came to be. Like 60% of the class said evolution, 10% said they didn't know for sure, and like 30% said by god. He then just completely ignored the creationist kids for basically the rest of that chapter unless they willingly answered questioned about evolution. But I teach HS bio and earth science. Most of the time when my kids are questioning accepted science, it really is just a lack of knowledge. So I take time to answer all their questions in language they can understand, show pictures or videos if I can, and just generally take the time they need to understand. A lot of the time, they're distrustful of how do scientists know that though because previous teachers have told them something is true without explaining the evidence. I've had a few kids who have flat out said they don't believe in evolution, an old earth, or dinosaurs because of religious reasons. I always say something to the effects of those are your religious beliefs, and you are completely entitled to have them. I teach science though, so I am going to give you information from a scientific perspective and then do the same things as above. I actually just had a kid the other day say, after a lesson on the geologic timeline, that she was starting to doubt her beliefs. I'm not trying to convince my students to abandon their religious beliefs, but it was validating to hear that she was starting to look at things from a different perspective. PhD here, I have tried to increase as much as possible my knowledge around my lessons to counteract this kind of students, at least. I tried to open their eyes with true examples from papers. Finally, if they don't want to understand, we cannot do more. Obligatory I am not a teacher. My freshman year science teacher made an excellent point to a few religious kids in our class, and they were appreciative of his consideration. He said he would be assessing them on the information presented in his classroom. It was not meant to insult their current beliefs. He wanted them to have the understanding of the other side of the debate. As he further explained, if he were a Sunday school teacher, he would expect answers from the teachings of the Bible. Yes, he hoped they would change their minds. But at the end of the day, he wanted a smooth class for all kids involved. By making sure they knew he was not trying to change their minds, they were more open to the coursework. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.